Mm-hmm. Hey, you actually just brought up a good point, though. Some some of your wallets have things that are uh, artwork that's licensed. Yeah. Okay, is that something that you had to figure out how to deal with licensing? Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and this is a kind of um, an interesting sort of solution to some of those IP concerns that people have, right? Now, my product just happened to be a vehicle for graphics, but there's other ways you can license with brands who have bigger legal pull than you do. Mm -hmm. And those brands will vigorously defend their IP. So in a way, you kind of get a strategic uh, protection through a licensing ag- arrangement if the brand is you know, active in protecting mm-hmm. it. Can you give me an example? So, well, the most litigious probably is Disney. Um, and when we did Star Wars products, uh, you know, I pretty much knew that no one was going to dare um, produce that because uh, <laughs> they didn't get want to get annihilated, right. You know. <laughs> And that was a kind of protection for me. I was paying, obviously, the royalties, which is, you know, no small share. I'm sorry, who are you paying? You were paying royalties to Disney to get the license to the... Uh, artwork. The, right. What's it called? Yeah, the artwork. Thank yeah. you. All right. And you were getting some protection through that because, yeah, they're Disney and no, right. one, no one's going to F with them, right? Okay, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's kind of like, I think in my realm, where the wallet is a graphic vehicle, it was like, okay, what other graphic designs can I add to that? And that was a, a way of giving me that early protection. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think in other ways you can, you can figure out other partnerships that potentially can protect you too, whatever your product might be, you know. Did, did um, Disney approach you or did you approach Disney? Um, I think I approached them. Okay. At that point we had done so much licensing with like other brands, but um, it was... Well, the new Star Wars was coming out at the time. It was right. the first time a movie had been produced in, I don't know, 20 years or something. And uh, and I was like, oh, this could be huge. Let's do this. And did did you hire someone who knows about how to deal with licensing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that was um, – it, it, there's uh, – the, the, the downside of licensing mm-hmm. for whether it's, you know, the brand name or the – whatever it might be um, – the graphics, the designs, whatever. The downside is that it is so meticulous in terms of brand approvals, which means that you know everything you print on your wallet with that brand imagery on it or whatever has to go through a very scrupulous process. In the in the case of Disney, it was even so far that the factories itself had to have certain uh, inspections. Uh. You had to pass inspection to go through. So there's not like this doesn't just happen overnight. Yeah. Right. This is a year long investment into uh, bringing something to life. And then not even mentioning the legal responsibilities and making sure the contract is appropriate, making sure you fully understand your, your responsibilities under it, because it can be, you know, very onerous if you if you don't yeah. and you fail to commit to make those commitments. And that did uh, how did you find the lawyer or whatever it is, law firm that yeah. helped you figure that out? Well, there's a licensing trade show, okay, uh, and so you can register to visit it. You know, mm-hmm. I don't. I think it moves around every year, but there, there's also like you know lawyers who are uh, versed in licensing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's how I met my first contact, and because I remember, uh, I actually I was I had I had no idea what I was doing, so I actually rented a booth at the licensing show. And that was so unusual for a product. <laughs> right. Usually it's the brands that are selling stuff. This guy's stuff. got balls. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like. He's sticking outside the booth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. But the funniest thing is that, like people were, it was such a different thing. Yeah. That literally gave me so much attention. Mm. And there were so many brands that were coming to me going, oh, this is, oh, I get it. You can print anything on this wallet. And I'm right. like, Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, we represent this brand. And literally then I had all these people coming to my booth. Oh, it was unbelievable. That's an awesome idea. That's yeah. a killer, right. man. Mm-hmm. Just totally turned it around. But that wasn't intentional. It was just, again, it was like the YouTube thing. Ignor- like, ignorance you became just, yeah, brilliance. You, just keep, uh, you throw enough stuff against the wall and something's going to stick and then that works. And mm-hmm. then you take credit for it and, mm-hmm. and you, you know, you yeah. own it. Yeah. <laughs> you say, oh, that's what I meant to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hmm. That's hilarious. And what uh, you know, you obviously had a first time licensing deal. 
what did you learn from then till what you know now? Uh, would you change anything? Would you have changed anything or asked yeah. anything different? Or I think the first and foremost, most important thing is like just knowing how much you're committed to every year. It's there's always a um, uh, minimum royalty guarantee, and so you have to hit that baseline. So I think. <laughs> This is like some scary numbers now. I think back, I'm like, how did I ever do this? I signed my name to this, but it was like, it was something like fifty thousand dollars in royalties. Just, wow. just the royalties you paid to them. They wanted it to be a minimum of fifty in one year. In one year. So you have to do the math to figure out how many units you have to sell. Wow. To meet that requirement. And what was their royalty rate? Well, I, you know, I can't. Oh, yeah. it's, those are NDA things. I'm still under the. But as far as like. Uh, I mean, like a ballpark for an average licensing agreement can be from 10% to 15% to at the top. Some brands, I think the Yankees are like 20%, which is unheard of, wow. uh, the Yankees brand. But in that 18% range, that's when you're really talking about a lot of margin, mm-hmm. you know, and those are on all the tiers of your sales channels. And they're taking 18% off the gross, the MSRP, if you will, of the, yeah. uh, or the retail price of, of what Yeah, you're the selling. retail price. And okay. then it's a, a smaller percent at wholesale and even smaller in distribution. Gotcha. So it's, re- but it's pretty much relative yeah. to the retail mm-hmm. price. Okay. Interesting. So when, uh, when you're, oh, I lost it. I just had it. Sorry. But those are the reasons why I would, now looking back, I would, be very cautious about signing uh, those agreements because a lot of times the brand will pitch you because mm. they're they're interested in making money too, yeah, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. And they'll say, "Oh, we got this going on and that going on and da da da." And then it's like any relationship, you know. After that first date, you're just like, "Okay, where are you? Hello, did you? An- right? Like, you're not answering my text anymore." And then <laughs> they're not like doing squat for you, but mm. you're on the hook for fifty grand. Yeah. I mean, that's some... Um, th- Easy those to get were, in, I, hard th- to get out. Yeah. Well, and they, they sell you on the fact they're like, we're this this amazing X, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, let's just say Star Wars. I mean, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, man, these are going to sell out the second yeah. I put them online, and maybe they do, or maybe that's n- like yeah. cricket, cricket, and you're like, yeah. uh-oh, 50,000 or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's so much you don't know about yeah. a product launch. So yeah. if, if a brand is... That's why it's like now, okay, here's a great lesson. It's like... Only work with brands that are very established and are very like um, not not without without spikes. So I wouldn't go into something expecting a great return for one event. Yeah, I would get into a brand that I felt uh, I had a kinship with that my consumers are obviously connected to, and then um, that has a long term brand value, not just because of a movie release or some other p- specific thing that's happening, mm-hmm. because those. You're putting too much, uh, you're gambling a lot for that one t- potential return. And if it doesn't work out, well, then exactly that scenario happens. And yep. you're just like, oh, my God, like, we didn't sell any of them. Like, it's just a But nightmare. you're still on the hook for X yeah. amount. Yeah. So to any listeners who uh, have a invention idea right now that they maybe want to print a, a protected piece of art on, what do they Google search to, to, to find an agent to help them with that? For licensing? Yeah, so they can license like Disney art. Oh, yeah. Um, well, so each brand is a little different, but most of them have licensing uh, departments. Okay. And so they're, they're not hard to find. Okay. You just, I mean, sometimes it's just contact and customer service and they'll put you in touch with whoever. Oh, okay. Man, because look, they're, they're really interested in making money. It's their job. So their, uh, you know, their motivation is to connect with you. And have you reached out to these ever reached out to these um, uh, licensing departments on your own, or have you always had a lawyer do that on your behalf? Uh, mo- mostly, it's on my own until okay. we get to a place where it's, uh, you know, we want to talk terms. And then are they pretty usually pretty friendly to talk with you about things? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and in most cases, like like I said, it's it's a very unique marketplace you know um there's no tangible good yet it's all just you know like if you go to the licensing show it's crazy there's just a bunch of desks right it has to be visually unappealing it's so strange (laughs) it's like everyone's just sitting down talking yeah like that's it (laughs) (laughs) nothing to look at (laughs) no but they're all like it's all paper and uh you know percentages and this and that and and 
um, there's no visual, like very few uh, brands that are out there doing that. So yeah, I don't know. For me, it worked out great. But like I said, there's other ways of licensing. Like, you know, I don't know. I mean, like you look at brands like uh, Tommy Hilfiger, for example, mm-hmm. they've, they don't, they don't produce anything. Oh, everything is a licensing deal. Really? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. So they're producing, well, what they're doing is they're selling their brand to other, either manufacturers or other smaller tier people who oh, are producing okay. it. And in many ways, like the Trump brand is a brand similar that he puts his name on a building and then they get the royalties yeah. for that. They're not actually making the building. Right. Right. So the licensing can have a lot of different relationships. It was cologne, perfume, all kinds of things, you know. And now licensing is getting into this really creative space where, you know, you see like Febreze licensing with like, I don't know, the crazy stuff. You well, know, Swiffer like, will mix with like yeah. a, a cleaning solution and it's like the, yeah. the Clorox right. Swiffer or whatever it is. Yeah. They're so collabing like it's hot. Collabs, right? right. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting.